he had only seven hits last night. They've had five in this game. Davis came in in the fourth inning and struck out Gino Damari. The runner at third. Then he let his teammates go to work and score some runs. The big hit of the inning. Chris Roberts with a three run single. Off the wall and right center field. Coleman's the kid who played at Cal State Fullerton and then transferred to Miami. Grew up in California. He'll take a seat. Davis with another strikeout. He has struck out the only two batters he's faced in the game to this point. I got Coleman on a good looking curveball. Watch how much this breaks into the right handed swinging hitter. Really handcuffed. That was a good pitch by the Seminole reliever Tim Davis. Brings out a grin on his face. Kid from Bristol. Here's George Fabergas now. Fabergas is 0 for 2 in this one. Boy, he started out like a house of fire last night. Had base hits in his first two plate appearances. Since then, is hitless in four consecutive trips. Tell you he would much rather have Fabregas up there in this situation with nobody on, and in a situation where he can hurt you with the bat, runners in scoring position. Fabregas has been sensational against Florida State pitching, batting 488 against FSU pitching. 21 hits in 43 trips coming into the game. Three home runs, five doubles, a triple. And I think you can add another base hit to the collection. Just reached down and sliced it into left field. He's something else. George Fabregas. Well, here's a guy that Florida State has had the number on, Charles Johnson. A couple of strikeouts tonight, 0 for 6 in the series. Johnson played Westwood High School at Fort Pierce. Good looking prospect here. Solid catcher. Got a good bat. Ron Frazier's going to have a chance to make that play. It's a nice hand. Frazier. A couple of steps to his right. He can still go to his right, folks. You know, just about the only statistic that Kenny Lee, the baseball sports information director of Miami, doesn't have is how many times in 29 seasons Ron Frazier has fielded a foul ground ball. Down there. That may be the only stamp that Kenny doesn't have in his book. But it's been more than a few. What do you think? Boy, I'll tell you what, what a career he has had. This notched his 1,200 victory two weeks ago. Charles Johnson, a Baseball America preseason All American selection. Link Jarrett at short, second for one on the first. They turn the double play. Just like you draw it up. Six, four, three. Nothing doing for the Hurricanes in the top of the fifth. We're halfway through this game. Florida State nine, Miami four. The Olive Garden, at the end of every generous bowl of crisp garden salad, 
every bountiful basket of soft, fresh-baked breadsticks, and every warm, friendly smile, you will always find another, and another, and another. Because at the Olive Garden, the word generosity begins with a G, but ends only when you are happy. The Olive Garden Italian restaurant, where all the best... You got the right one, baby! There's only one right one, baby. You got the right one, baby. Think you can sing our song? Send your videotape performance and you could win $10,000 and appear in a Diet Pepsi commercial. We move to the bottom of the fifth inning at Dick Houser Stadium, Florida State, thanks to a four spot in the bottom half of the fourth inning, leaves the third ranked Miami Hurricanes 9 to 4. Gene Decker off along with Wayne Hogan with you. Hope you're enjoying tonight's telecast from the state capital of the Sunshine State, Tallahassee, Florida. Florida State ranked number two in the most recent baseball polls, collegiate baseball and baseball America. The Hurricanes are ranked third in one poll, fifth in the other. And today, with LSU losing at Tennessee, a victory here tonight, maybe one more tomorrow by the second-ranked Seminoles, might move them back into the top spot in the poll. Stanford briefly was ranked number one. Seminoles had been number one for four weeks before falling to number two after losing two of four on the road last week. Yeah, I got a call up earlier today from Rod Delmonico. We mentioned Rod's name earlier. He's the head coach at Tennessee now. And uh, said he had a chance to catch the telecast last night. He said he just wanted to tell us they were taking on the number one LSU Tigers today in a doubleheader. We mentioned that Tennessee had beaten LSU in the first game of that doubleheader. They had some rain problems up there. I don't know if they've gotten the second game started yet. But Delmonico, former assistant to Mike Martin here at Florida State, trying to help his old head coach by knocking off that number one team. Leek Jarrett is leading off for Florida State as the Seminoles batted around in the fourth. They come to bat in the fifth with a five run advantage. It'll be Jarrett, Dunbar, and Beavis. Swing and a miss by Jarrett. Steve Day on in relief of Jeff Alkire. Bases loaded, bases clearing, single by Chris Roberts, really the undoing, the final straw for Alkair. Well, the count goes to three and two. We've had a bunch of three and two counts in this game. Both teams taking a lot of pitches. Jarrett trying to get on there to lead off the inning. There's a base hit to right. So Leek Jarrett has his first hit of the night. He is one for two. He's got a couple of hits and six trips in the series. He's having quite a freshman season, isn't he? It's not easy for a freshman to come right in and start one in one of these programs like a Miami or a Florida State, much less start at shortstop. But Jarrett's the first freshman to start at shortstop for the Seminoles. You got to go all the way back into the late 60s. I understand before you find a guy that started at shortstop as a freshman for FSU. First, Dunbar at the plate. Day with the breaking ball. They tried to get the call strike, not to be. One ball and one strike. Well, Day was a starter last year, primarily. This year he's moved into a long relief role for the Hurricanes. Six and one last year. As a junior. Runner going. Foul back. Yeah, Day's from Baltimore, Gene, but he came down and 
played at Indian River Community College for Coach Mike Eason. And then transferred to the University of Miami. Great for, played high school ball for the Brooklyn Park Bees in Baltimore, Maryland. That was a Brooklyn Park in Minnesota, too. Jesse Ventura. Jesse, the body Ventura, your old color analyst on the Tampa Bay Bucks broadcast. Minnesota, not Maryland. The whole town of Steve Dick. Well, the count has moved to three balls and two strikes on Dunbar. Jarrett's at first, nobody out. Florida State bats in the bottom of the fifth. Lead nine to four. Trying to win their fourth in a row over Miami. Dating back to last year. Last year, Miami took two of three here at Tallahassee. The Seminoles turned the tables on the Hurricanes at Mark Lake Stadium, winning two of three down there. One last night, lead nine to four. Here. Winner is going. The pitch is a ball. Four, the throw won't matter because Dunbar is on at first with the base on ball. They'd have had him had that not been ball four. Good throw by Charles Johnson. They a little bit upset with himself. Thought he had a pretty good pitch. Look at the Seminole heavy hitters. The top third of the batting order. Six for seven tonight with a couple of walks and eight runs scored. But look at the cold Hurricanes. Top third of their batting order, one for nine, and has not scored a run. That's a big difference in this ball game. Florida State leading it nine to four. Top of the order now, and Allen Beavis to face Steve Day. Runners at first and second. Beavis is bunting. Mike Martin. Still trying to scratch for more runs. Five is not enough. He's thinking. Florida State coach Mike Martin looking on. Beavis takes a strike. It's one and one. Florida State has really revamped its baseball program in the last five or six years. They have gone from what was a team of just sheer power hitters trying to outscore everybody to a team that bunts and tries to steal bases and scratch for runs. Good strong pitching. Really a change in the style of play. Well, symbolic of that early 1980s Seminole brand of baseball with a long power. Guy by the name of Jeff Ledbetter, career home run leader at Florida State, was enshrined in the Florida State Sports Hall of Fame just earlier today and was recognized just before tonight's game got underway. In fact, it was Jeff Ledbetter, a left handed power hitter, that probably more than anything contributed to the erection of a huge fence down that third field line out there that goes about, what, 30 feet high? Yeah, 35 feet high. Used to hit them up into those pine trees, Gene. Or the nickname Treetops. There they are. Missing a few branches from a Jeff Letter, but better home run or two. Fans used to come to the ballpark and instead of keeping track of strikes, they'd keep track of home runs. But by Beavis is foul, and this one's picked up quickly down there by Fabregas. Well, you know, there, there is really a specific reason for the change of philosophy. When Mike Martin took his ball club out to the College World Series in Omaha, those big power hitting teams that he used to have, they would get out there and play in Rosenblatt Stadium where the outfield walls were so far back, the home run was really taken out of the game. It was a game for pitching and speed and defense in Omaha. And Mike Martin said, hey, we got to tailor our game so we could go win in Omaha because that's where national championships are won. 
see if this one's going to stay in play. It is, and Faberdash makes the catch. Out number one, Beavis pops to Faberdash. Foul territory. Faberdash went all the way over to the fence. Watch this. He gets to the fence. He knows where it is. Still looking, still looking. May have overrun it. Now has to come back and snow cone it. I don't think any of those fans over there were going to give him any help. George Fabregas. He's having a good season, both at the plate, defensively as well, and he is a legitimate candidate for the Golden Spike Award. Already a preseason All-American. The batter is Nandy Serrano, and what a night he's had. Three for three, as you can see. Four for six in the series. And Mike Martin is saying right now, I'm sure glad he was able to battle off that ankle injury and get in the lineup for this series. There was a lot of question about that. Mike Martin, career record 644 wins, 210 losses, and three ties. He's trying to get back to 500, though, in his career against Miami. He's 132 and lost 35. He can inch closer to 500 against the Canes with a victory tonight. His team leads at 9 to 4 right now. A ball and two strikes to Serrano. You see how Miami pitchers have struggled. They've been behind on 20 of 28 batters. You can't pitch from behind or you'll get hurt. I'm sure that's what Brad Kelly's been preaching down in that Miami dugout. Serrano strikes out in a good off-speed breaking ball by Dave. First strikeout by Steve Day. First base and the third strikeout of the ball game of a Florida State batter. Really pulled the string. Here's Perez now, two down. Outside from Day. Perez has scored every time he has been to the plate. He's got three runs to his credit. Reached on a fielder's choice, a single, and a walk. Ball and a strike to him. Eduardo told me his uncle was watching the game last night down at Puerto Rico. Had a chance to check in with him today. You'll remember, Gene, last night we were mentioning that we thought everybody in Puerto Rico was watching the game. <laughs> His uncle said almost everybody. Perez spun around by the pitch. Two balls and one strike. Tony Perez, the first base coach for the Cincinnati Reds. Two and two as Perez fouls this one back. Saw where the Reds had dropped out of first place for the first time in a little over a year. They had that big brawl on Thursday of last week with the Houston Astros. I wonder if Tony got involved in that. Huh. I don't think so. The 2-2 will not be made as they bluff the runner back to second. Jarrett was pretty close to the bag anyway. Florida State 9, Miami 4. Seminoles batting in the bottom of the fifth inning. Two down, runners at first and second. 
and a 2 2 count on the leading hitter on this Florida State team, Eduardo Perez. Swing and a miss. That time, heat on the outside part of the plate. Seminoles get a couple of runners, they get a base hit, but they leave two. We've played five now. It's 9 4 FSU. Go outdoors with Sunshine Network, Florida's prime network affiliate. It's a college baseball showdown. Miami, one of the hottest teams in the country. Florida State stole the top spot with a 22 game win streak. Game three live Sunday at one on Sunshine Network. George Foreman was in the early stages of a comeback that captured national attention. His comeback continues with a title shot. Now, see how he got there. Thursday night at 9 on Sunshine Network, an affiliate of Prime Network. Stay ahead of the pack. This weekend, NASCAR gives you the chance to talk with your favorite racers from Darrell Waltrip to Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd to Ken Schrader. NASCAR's top drivers and crew chiefs will answer your questions and share their expertise from every stop on the NASCAR circuit, live. This Week in NASCAR, live from Wilkesboro, Thursday night at 11 on Sunshine Network. So to toe boxing action on Prime Network. There's a happy young lady at Dick Houser Stadium. After five innings of play, they have a motion every home game, and you have to decide to pick a base, and if you choose right, you win money. And that's why the big grin there. Happy baseball fan with cold cash. In her head. I don't think she's going to get out of the ballpark because third base umpire Bruce Ravan has got her by the arm, and he's going to escort her down. Rod Fraser. I think Fraser's going to get a little bit of that cash payoff. Gene, what is he? What do you think? I don't know. You know, one of the innovators of promotions at college baseball parks has been Ron Fraser. Remember the time he put on that black tie, formal dinner, 11 courses at Mark Light Stadium, and charged ten thousand dollars a plate? People said you're crazy, Coach. He sold out the dinner. It made an awful lot of money for his baseball program at the same time. An awful lot of baseball clubs. What was that? About eight, nine years ago? My favorite Ron Fraser promotion had to be the trip to nowhere, or the trip to somewhere is what it was called. Everybody had to come to the ballpark with their suitcase packed. They were going to draw a ticket at random, and the fan who won left the ballpark immediately, was taken directly to the airport, and they didn't tell him where they were going. So you had to pack for cold weather, warm weather, and everybody came to the ballpark with their suitcases and uh, had the drawing, and it was a big time had by all. The Miami Maniac we talked about last night. What a great character he is, huh? Well, the Atlantic Regional last year, they had an awful lot of rain during the tournament. My last, my last shot in my mind of the Miami Maniac was floating around in a rowboat out there at Mark Light Stadium with all that rain. An awful lot of rain last year. How about that? Took a career record right there. 1,204 wins, 419 losses. That's a pretty good promotion in itself. Ron Frazier will coach the United States team. Pan American Games, and should that team qualify, they will participate in the 1992 Olympics. And that's the guy that will be the head coach of the United States team. But nine teams will be invited to play on the Olympics, including the host team from Spain. It's an automatic invite. And then eight other teams, and the qualifier for teams in this hemisphere will take place in the Pan American Games. Some maintenance work done on the field here at the end of the fifth inning as we head into the sixth now. Florida State up by a score of nine to four. That guy right there, Tim Davis, is 
trying to come in. He could pick up a win. The starter, Jimmy Lewis, did not go enough innings. You've got to pitch five before you can get a win. So one of the relievers in this ball game will be the one to qualify. The Seminoles can hang on to the lead. Frank Mora has just owned Florida State through his career. Tonight he has walked twice, scored a run back in the second inning. Oh, really took a rip at that one. And Tim Davis had him fooled. Big cut, big strike. Two balls and a strike to Mora. Nine hits and 21 official at bats against FSU pitching. Two balls and two strikes. Gene, these two clubs big play again down at Mark Light Stadium. First weekend in May. Oh, and they'll be standing in line for tickets for that one, too. And they always fill it up when the Seminoles come down to Miami. Laura waves in one. Strikeout recorded by Tim Davis. That is the third strikeout by Davis, and it's the ninth Miami batter to strike out in this ball game. 10 hurricanes struck out last night. Roger Bailey fan 10. Walked only one. Last night's 5 to 2 Florida State win. Here's Miranda now. Miranda one for two in the game, doubled and scored back in the second. Hurricanes got two in the second and two more in the fourth. It was a six to four game when Chris Roberts hit a ball off the right field wall with the bases loaded and two out. That really gave the Seminoles some breathing room here. 0 oh and two to Miranda. down on strikes in this inning. Strikeout number four for Davis. Number 10 by the Seminole Hurlers tonight. And that matches last night's strikeouts against the Hurricanes. Ten of them by Bailey tonight. Lewis and Davis. Lewis struck out six. Despite giving up four runs being roughed up and hooked back in the fourth inning. Batters Tozar now. He finally got himself a base hit. First of the series. Back in the fourth inning. Florida State's remaining schedule this year is pretty tough. The Seminoles have to go, in fact, on the road to play at the University of Florida. Two games this week on Tuesday and Wednesday nights. Seminoles took swept a two game series with the Gators here in Tallahassee earlier this year. Two balls and two strikes to Toza. Florida State with a lot of road games left to play. In fact, 11 of their last 20 games are on the road. That pitch just missed. It's three and two to Tozar. Two down, nobody on in front of him. Kane's bat in the top of the sixth inning. into the bat.
Jim Davis, the only Florida State player who was married on the baseball team. Cozar stays alive. His wife Mary Catherine is a school teacher. Three and two to Tozar. Mike can get on. Chris Anderson is the on deck batter. Chopped it foul, and Chris Anderson caught the foul chop standing in the on deck circle. We'll do the payoff pitch once again. Foul tip, and the foal could not hang on. Just had enough spin on the foul tip to bounce out of the catcher's mitt. Hey, that I would got, have been the final out of the. Inning. I got to give Tozar some credit, though. At least he's fouling them off inside the fences here, saving some baseballs. This one is going to be hit to Beavis. To Perez, and the inning is over. Three up and three down. Nothing across for the Hurricanes in the sixth. Bottom half of the sixth coming up. Seminoles lead Miami nine to four. In the top of the six for Miami. For years, I've done some wild things in our commercials to let you know you'll always get the guaranteed best prices on Michelin tires at Tire Kingdom. You'll also find one of the biggest selections of long mileage Michelin tires anywhere, backed by Tire Kingdom's exclusive mileage guarantees. And at Tire Kingdom, you'll get the fastest service in town. We'll install your Michelin tires in 45 minutes or less, guaranteed. So for the best prices, great selection, guaranteed mileage, and the fastest service anywhere, come to Tire Kingdom. The towers of the Westcott Administration Building, symbols of the spirit of Florida State University. A spirit of exploration, of discovery, of innovation, of distinction, of achievement. The spirit behind the spear. Educational excellence at Florida State University. Compliments of Blockbuster Video. Well, Florida State 9 and Miami 4. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. FSU with nine runs on eight hits. That is Steve Day, who is on in relief of Jeff Alkire. Alkire chased in a four-run fourth inning by Florida State. And he's going to face the middle of the Florida State order. The four, five, six hitters for Fole Roberts and Kenny Felder. Wayne Hogan along with Gene Deckerhoff, our Prime Network crew here in Tallahassee at Dick Hauser Stadium for tonight's baseball action. Watch this little ball looped into left field for a base hit. The Cole just got enough of it and politely served it. Now they throw the ball away and more trouble for the Hurricanes. The Cole on his way to third. Here comes the throw there, not in time. And Miami manages to turn a bloop single into a three base problem. Greg Coleman, the left fielder, threw to second base and threw it 10 feet over the glove of second sacker Mike Tozar. And it went all the way to the fence down the right field line. Griffol made the turn at second and hesitated, but not much, and slid safely into third base. A two-base throwing error by Greg Coleman, the left fielder. Watch it again. This was a looper. Had a lot of backspin on it. Got underneath it. Rafole had the single, and he wasn't going to try to stretch it to two. Watch Coleman's throw. It just sails on it. At least five or six feet over. Tozar, the second baseman, and Rafole is safely in at third. He leads off the Seminole sixth. Well, that is the third Miami error in this game. Florida State committed three errors last night, but... In contrast to what's happened tonight, the errors last night did not hurt Florida State. 
that because Roger Bailey kept pitching himself out of trouble spots. But tonight the errors have been costly for the Hurricanes. Rafoles at third. Nobody out in the sixth. Chris Roberts had a three-run single back in the fourth inning. Speaking of those three Hurricane errors, two of them were with this guy at the plate, Roberts, and both of them by the shortstop, Chris Anderson. He got a chance for another one, but that's off of his glove and into left field. Grafol scores easily. The ball was hit almost right at Anderson, but he has really had his problems in this game. That'll be scored an error. His third of the game, the Hurricanes fourth. And the hat trick by Roberts. All three errors charged on the shortstop Anderson have been with Chris Roberts at the plate. Designated hitter, Kenny Bell. Well, a rough night for Chris, hasn't it? Chris Anderson, a good night for Chris Roberts. He drives in four runs. Well, it's now a 10 to 4 game. And Mike Martin says, thank you very much, Hurricanes, for giving us a run here in the sixth inning. Kenny Felder, the hitter. First run scored against Steve Day. That, at this point, is unearned. Roberts is running. Felder swings and misses. Throw is by Kozar. And safe in second is Roberts with the stolen base. That's his second of the Roberts drives in four runs, steals a couple of bases. Tamari's on the hill as the Seminole starter. Going to be a short night for him. He's going to have to get a good night's sleep. What do they say? Sleep fast. Huh? Be back out here bright and early, ready to pitch tomorrow. Chopped over the head of Chip Baker in the third base box. You know, I've slept fast a few times. Haven't you? Now there's Chip Baker, and I'll tell you what. Any kind of a bouncing ball is going to be over Chip's head. <laughs> yeah, Chip's going to get married in a couple of weeks. Bounce to third. Fabergas has got it. His throw is on the money. Felder's out. One away. Yeah, we probably ought to. Expound on that one a little bit. Chip Baker Center fielder, Tom has been known to do things a little bit unorthodox. Well, he's getting married between games of a doubleheader here in a couple of weeks. Virginia Tech will be in town, and Chip to tie the knot. Ought to be an interesting night at the ballpark. Have there been any other marriages that you can remember? It Hauser Stadium or formerly Seminole Field uh, through the years, Wayne? I, not I, that I can remember. I remember a football player at Florida State, Freddie Boletnikoff, was married at the football stadium. Under the goalpost. Yeah. That's going back a few years. Freddie's last season at Florida State was in 1964. One one pitch to Ty Mueller off the end of the bat. Chip's going to be married to Julie Larson, who was an outstanding softball pitcher here at Florida State. By the way, I believe way we're going to telecast that doubleheader. I've never, I've never done play-by-play -play on a wedding before. And John Lewis probably never directed one either. Florida State with a runner at second. Steve Day working to Mueller. Tried to check his swing, couldn't do it. It's a strikeout. Number three in the K column for Steve Day. Roberts still out at second, and Bleak Jarrett will be the hitter with two down. 
Seminoles shortstop. Ten to four. Blake Florida Jarrett. State on top. Seminoles batting in the bottom of the sixth. We're at Dick Hauser Stadium. Better than 6,000 here for the second night in a row. Florida State won last night, five to two. Game three of the series right here on Prime Network tomorrow, one o'clock first pitch for that one. Jarrett's one for two officially. He was also hit by a pitch in this game. There they try a pickoff throw down to second. Oh, got away from Anderson. You know, Anderson, to his defense, he has a, he hurt his wrist. We were told just before the ball game that he may in fact not be able to play in this game. There may be a lineup change. And then we spoke with Joe Zagaki of Miami's radio affiliate. And he said he had spoken with Anderson and he told him he felt fine, he was ready to go. So I don't know if that wrist is bothering him or not. The way he handled that throw down to second looked like having a little problem with this left wrist and he has certainly had a rough night in the field two and two to link Jarrett the Florida State shortstop looking forward to seeing freshman phenom Jose Prado work tomorrow they say he's got a fastball that'll get your attention Tough play here, Fabregas on the run. He got him. Jarrett is thrown out. The Seminoles add a run, though, in the bottom of the sixth. On a hit and a couple of errors. It's 10-4, Florida State, as we head to the seventh. Virgil baseball is changing. It's a business. A baseball scout, the last of his kind, has made the discovery of his career. How good is my son? He's the best I've ever seen. Now, he must make the choice of a lifetime. Saturday's too quick to pitch this kid. Am I ready? You want to help a pitcher? Edward James Olmos, talent for the game, rated PG. Starts Friday, April 26th at select theaters. It's your tires ain't pretty, man. You know the service of the products that you get in the United States. When you take them back, the service stinks, and you know it, and I know it. Let me tell you something. Allied is committed to customer service. You bring a tire back to Allied. I don't care where you bought it. You can buy it in New York State. You can buy it at another tire store in Florida. Wherever you bought it, if you need service, you go to Allied, and we'll take care of you. You'll be pleased, and that service will be transcendent. That's Allied. Prime Network presents the best in college baseball on this Saturday night in second-ranked Florida State against third-ranked Miami at Dick Houser Stadium in Tallahassee. Gene Decker off along with Wayne Hogan. We move to the top of the seventh inning. The Hurricanes come to the plate trailing 10-4. All right, Gene, we've got Luis Hernandez batting for Chris Anderson. He finally has come out of the ball game. That wrist obviously bothering Anderson making it difficult for him to play in the field. And although at the plate, it looked like he was swinging a pretty good bat. He had a hit. He had a couple of trips. So this is Hernandez. We saw Hernandez last night in the ball game. He started in right field and moved back to the infield in the late innings. Five foot five inch freshman. So Florida State has made a change in left field. That's Garrett Blanton. Came into the ball game to replace Chris Roberts. Strike three call. Hernandez down on strike. 
nice. Timmy Davis is really motoring along here since he came in in the fourth inning. That is his fifth strikeout. Take a look at it here. Hernandez coming up off the bench. And boy, that was a good breaking ball. I don't think Hernandez was expecting it. Ball out on strikes. That's his top pitch, Tim Davis, but that big breaking curveball. Here's Donald Robinson. That's pretty good pitching prowess for you right there. 23 times this year the Seminoles have struck out 10 or more batters in a ball game. That is a lot of K's. You see Robinson's had a good night. He had a big two run double with two outs back in the fourth inning. Since then, the Hurricanes have seen things go the other way. Seminoles leading it 10 to 4. And Miami running out of opportunities here as they bat in the seventh. Robinson taking all away that time. Strikeout number six for Rob for uh, Tim Davis, and he matches starter Jim Lewis with six strikeouts. Twelve Hurricanes have fanned tonight. Hurricanes came into tonight's ball game having struck out 270 times, and that's quite a bit for a Miami baseball team. Gino Damari now top of the order again. He tries to bunt his way on. This one's going to be a tough play. Perez. Mizuno Performance Products helps bring NCAA baseball into homes across America. Mizuno equipment, footwear, and apparel are used by more than 200 major leaguers. Mizuno. Prime Network. All sports for all seasons. Nobody shows more college baseball than Prime Network. National champions, conference champions, nationally ranked teams from the SWC, SEC, Pac-10, and Big 8. From the first pitch of the season to the last at bat in the conference championships, it's the highest scoring, most exciting game around. It's rivalries. It's tradition. It's all season on Prime Network. Is there anything that Eduardo Perez can't do with a baseball? Watch this play by the junior first baseman. Tough chance, feels it. The underhand scoop and covering the bag. Davis just ahead of the runner. Gino Damari. And that's how the game of baseball is played. And Perez and Davis pull it off. We're at the seventh inning stretch part of our game. Florida State coasting with a 10 to 4 lead, but Miami is never out of a ball game, are they? Florida State leading this ball game by a score of 10 to 4. The Seminoles have really controlled it, mostly since that big base hit by Chris Roberts back in the fourth inning when he had two outs and the bases loaded, hit the ball off the right field wall. And I'll tell you what, that is what really gave Florida State a cushion. Broke open a 6 to 4 ball game, and Roberts with that three run producing base hit chased Jeff Alkire. 
And both teams have relievers on the mound. We go to the bottom of the seventh. That leading off for Florida State is Mark Dunbar, the right fielder. Seminoles rolling along comfortably behind the relief pitching effort of Timmy Davis. But Mike Martin is never comfortable with any kind of a cushion against the Miami Hurricanes. Steve Day's done a good job since coming on in relief. He has been touched for just one run, and that mostly the result of some Miami errors back in the sixth inning. Dunbar in the ball game is 0 for 2. He reached on a walk his last time up. Well, you can see the Hurricanes have a few problems coming back when they trail in the seventh inning. Dunbar down on strikes. Credits Steve Day with his fourth strikeout since coming on in relief. One out in the seventh. Well, Luis Hernandez stayed in the game to play shortstop for Miami. And the Hurricanes have made a couple of other defensive moves. Damari moves over to left in this inning. And Jonathan Smith is the new center fielder. Florida State's batter is Alan Beavis. Beavis got his batting average up over 300, as you can see, up to 302. That's going to be a tough play for Hernandez, and Fabregas nearly ran together. Hernandez having the same kind of problems out there that Anderson had earlier. So the change of shortstops didn't help much on the defensive end. That is the fourth error tonight on a Hurricane shortstop. And Fabregas, I think, may have gotten in his way and then ducked out of the way and by then Hernandez had no chance at ricocheted off the heel of his mid or maybe off of his leg. You see George Fabregas. He thought he might have a play and I think Hernandez thought he was going to make it. And when he didn't he committed the error. That is error number five on the Hurricanes tonight. Well Leap Sack is going to hit for Serrano and he proceeds the blast one into center field. It gets by Smith. Streaking to third is Beavis. He's going to score. And Lee Sack steps up to the plate and just promptly serves one off the wall in center for a run scoring double. It's 11 to 4. Tony Lee Sack, who will move to third base, I believe, and replace Nandy Serrano, who has that bum ankle, takes a swing at the first pitch he looks at. Gets all of it, gives it a long ride, and center fielder Jonathan Smith went to his right, then to his left, and was motoring at the same time and just couldn't flag it down out there. An RBI producing double by Tony Liesbach. Well, the five errors committed by the Hurricanes, the most in any game this season, previous high being four, probably the most in a long time. I can't remember a Hurricane team having this kind of a night defensively. Perez takes a strike. Eleven runs, ten hits, no errors for Florida State. Four, six, and five for the Hurricane. There have been high, some high scoring games between these two over the years. Scoring in double digits, not that Uncommon Florida State beat Miami back in April of 88, 20 to 8. Back in 1957, Florida State scored more runs than in any other game against these Miami Hurricanes when they beat the Canes 21 to 3. That was before Ron Frazier's time as the skipper. The longest running rivalry in the state of Florida, baseball. Started back here. 1951, these two started playing. Two 
balls and two strikes to Perez. This rivalry goes back so far that Ron Fraser was playing in a Florida State uniform when the Seminoles were playing Miami in baseball. We got Dick Hauser, back of the late 50s, Mike Martin. And our good buddy Tony Avitable, who was here earlier tonight, honored as an inductee into the Florida State Sports Hall of Fame. Tony Avitable was on that team. Once struck out 24 batters in a single game. An NCAA record. The 3-2 to Perez struck him out. Speaking of records, Wayne, the Seminoles are up 11-4. The all-time school record for consecutive wins at home is 31. That was tied last night. Tonight, they're after 32 in a row at Hauser Stadium, which would be a new school record. It was set back in 1978, a team that made it to the College World Series with Woody Woodward as the skipper. Woody now the general manager of the Seattle Mariners. And had Mike Martin as his assistant coach back in those days. Replaced for one year by Dick Hauser in 1979, and Hauser retained Martin as an assistant. And then when Dick Hauser was called by George Steinbrenner to manage the New York Yankees in 1980, the job went to the former Florida State outfielder from the mid-60s, Mike Martin taking over the job in 1980. The rest is history, as they say. Martin winning 50 or more games in every season he's been the skipper at Florida State. By the way, with last night's win over Miami, Florida State assured of its 44th consecutive winning season. They've never had a losing record in Tallahassee. This ball's hit a mile in the air, but it's going to be in the bleacher seats up on the left side. Well, you don't want to try to catch one of those things with your bare hand. That ball was up there a mile. Mike Martin giving Pedro Grifo the green light on the 3 0 count. Grifo wearing one of those ankle protectors, too. Do you know that some guys have a tendency to foul tip a lot of balls down off of their shoe or the, off the instep? And some batters just feel comfortable wearing one of those. Nothing hurts more than taking a foul ball down there. There's a shot by the bag. Another run is going to be in. Grafol digging for second. And he'll be in there standing with a double. Grafol with his second hit of the night. And the Seminole rampage continues here. It's now 12 to 4. Left fielder, Garrett Blanton. You know, Griffo had a tremendous regional tournament in Starkville, leading the team in extra base hits. And against the Hurricanes, this is his eighth double in his career. Grew up in Miami, played at Columbus High, and played his college baseball in Tallahassee for Florida State. He's up over 290 career now, hitting against Miami from his hometown. Here's Blanton. If Blanton moves an inch, he's hitting right on the head. Is that curveball didn't break and sail right behind him? Charles Johnson walks about halfway to the mound and says, "All right, come on, Steve." Florida State 12, Miami 4. Seminoles batting in the bottom of the seventh. Wayne Hogan along with Gene Deckerhoff. We're at Dick Kowser Stadium in Tallahassee. We'll be back here tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, the reason Garrett Blanton is batting and not Chris Roberts, Roberts is getting, getting a rest now. He played the first six innings of this game. 
is now in the dugout and resting his arm. He'll be on the mound to Mars, the Seminole starter. That's one of the lowest earned run averages on the team. He was on base every time tonight. A long baseball game. Three balls and no strikes to Garrett Glenn. And as you mentioned, as we went into the bottom of the seventh here, it was Chris Roberts who gave the Seminoles the cushion with a three run single. Back in the fourth inning, when the tribe batted around, Blanton draws a walk. And things get tougher for Steve Day. Ron Frazier is going to make an immediate move. He leaves the dugout, and that'll be it for Steve Day. He didn't even cross the foul line before he was indicating he wanted a left hander. Well, Frazier had already made up his mind, as you said. He came out of there with only one thing in mind, and that was to get down into that bullpen and get the left hander up. There goes Steve Day. They did a nice job. But he was tagged pretty hard here in the seventh inning. Just about all of the problems that Miami has had, although Florida State has pounded out 11 hits, most of their, as you can see, mo this is the most runs allowed all year by a Miami team, but most of their problems stem back to the error situation. Five errors committed by the Hurricanes. And that just compounded things for the pitching staff. This is Dave Dorish, a junior left-hander, 5'11", 168-pound junior from Lake Worth, Florida. How about those numbers? He's only worked six innings, but he has not given up an earned run. Born in West Palm Beach, hometown of Lake Worth, coming into the ball game as you Mentioned Gene hasn't seen an awful lot of action. His junior college career took him to Palm Beach Community College in Lake Worth. You play for Randy Gailey down there? Randy Gailey, who is, I believe, at the ballpark tonight. Randy up for the three game series. So Dorish comes into the ball game and he's going to try to shut things down here. The Seminoles with runners at first and second. Fans looking on, they're having a good time. They have seen almost two ball games now and not a whole lot of negatives for the fans here in Tallahassee the last two nights. Well, after spending two weeks on the road, it was good to get home for the Seminoles. According to Mike Martin, the best remedy for a hitting slump would be to bit. have a huge crowd or two this weekend series against Miami, and we've already had over 12,000. Dick Houser Stadium in two nights, and they haven't disappointed the home crowd. As Florida State won last night 5-2, to two, and tonight have been pounding the baseball all over the yard. And five miscues, five errors by Miami certainly haven't helped. It's a 12-4 ball game. We're in the bottom of the seventh. This guy right here may be the most tired person in the ballpark. Had to play an entire football game this afternoon as a quarterback. Threw three touchdown passes in a two-point conversion and now he's been in there as the designated hitter all night in this ball game has not had a hit in the game though he's 0 for 3 reached on a walk back in the fourth inning swings and he misses this Dorish comes in with a tough assignment here one ball one strike two outs we're in the bottom of the seventh Florida State leads 12-4 the Seminoles threaten to get more. Runners at first and second. Really pull the string. One ball and two strikes. He hasn't shown fell to the same pitch yet. This is working to a one and two. Looks like he's got a pretty good hopping, breaking pitch. I don't know if it's a slider or a scroogey or what it is. Keep an eye on it again. Watch it sort of dance around. Look to be a screwball. Felder didn't get it. It's a strikeout. Dorish gets out of it, but the damage has been done. A couple of more runs, two hits, and an error. 
We played seven. Florida State comfortably in front, 12 to four. Go outdoors with Sunshine Network, Florida's prime network affiliate. Sunshine in Florida. And April's hottest sports action is here on Sunshine Network. First, the NBA's elite come to Florida. The Magic battle the best record in the NBA when Clyde the Glide and the Trailblazers come to the O Arena. Then the bird is back. Look out. The Celtics land in Orlando. Followed by the human highlight film, Dominique Wilkins and the Hogs. High flying April action in the NBA. And college baseball kicks into full gear with great matchups and nationally rated teams from the Pac 10, Southwest Conference, and Sunshine State Conference. Spring has just begun, so hit the light pro beach for volleyball. And catch a wave with the Pro Surf Tour in Hawaii. And from European golf to Virginia Slims of Houston. Don't miss the excitement of springtime sports all on Sunshine Network. Airbags are great when you hit from the front. But if somebody says you don't have to buckle up anymore... <laughs> Tell them they're full of hot air. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Florida State 12, Miami 4. We've played seven here at Dick Hauser Stadium in Tallahassee. And Florida State trying to nail this thing down. Tim Davis on in relief of Jimmy Lewis. And got a couple of more miles to go. Seminoles defensively look a little bit different this inning. Tony Leapsack has gone in to play third base as he hit for Nandy Serrano in the last inning. And Chris Brock inserted in right field for FSU, moving Mark Dunbar over to center. So a little bit of a different look and the Seminoles with a comfortable eight run lead. Miami getting ready to come to bat here in the eighth inning and here to take you the rest of the way Gene Deckerhoff Jonathan Smith swings at the first pitch gives it a long ride to deep left field Blank back to the wall and he's got it measured and makes the end but Jonathan Smith teed off on the first pitch thrown by Davis and gave it a long high ride it's a long out one away for the Hurricanes here on the top of the eighth inning Florida State is out hit the Hurricanes 11 to 6 and they lead 12 to 4. George Fabregas stands in. One for three tonight. Struck out in the first. Got a base hit in the fifth inning. He looks at a breaking pitch offered by Davis in there for a call strike. Davis settling down and was another breaking pitch that Fabregas really took, went after, and just fanned it air. 0 and 2. That curveball may have broken about as far as any that Davis has thrown tonight. Junior out of Bristol, Florida, over in Liberty County, played at Gulf Coast Community College. And here's a foul ball into the stands down the left field line. His only loss last year at Gulf Coast Community College was in a game with Miami Dade. And guess who he lost to? Alex Fernandez, who when he completed his junior college year went on to play Major League Baseball. Swung on and missed, and Fabregas strikes out for the second time tonight. And that is strikeout number seven. Thrown by Tim Davis tonight. He's having quite a performance. Two away now for cleanup hitting Charles Johnson, the Hurricane catcher. Seminole scored two in the first, three in the third, got four more in the fourth. Three of those runs delivered on a single by Chris Roberts. And then added two more in the sixth inning, or the seventh. This time, Davis tried to get Johnson to go fishing. Johnson held off. It's 1 0. Johnson tonight is 0 for 3, struck out twice and hit into a double play. There's that good looking breaking pitch. Off speed curveball, got the outside corner. Johnson hitting 325 as he faces Tim Davis. A 1 1. 
Foul ball. That almost hit our camera at the third baseline. Now let's protect that camera. We're not too worried about George Small, but <laughs> camera's worth a lot of money. One ball and two strikes. The Hurricanes are going to get some more activity in the bullpen. <laughs> and the guy running down there gets a cheer from the fans. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Johnson fans. And that is the third out of the inning, and Davis didn't know it. He wanted to strike out somebody else. Johnson fan, strikeout number two of the frame, number eight in the game by reliever Tim Davis. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's still 12-4. There comes a moment. Said I'm a professional scout for the California Angels. When you face the challenge. How good is my son? He's the best I've ever seen. Chase your dream. Am I ready? You got to believe in yourself, son. And find out if you've really got it. You want help a pitcher? Talent for the game. Rated PG. Starts Friday, April 26th at select theaters. This your tires ain't pretty, man. You know I've been doing these things for a long time, these commercials. I'm starting to take vitamins. You gotta take vitamins so you be invigorated, so you be able to know all this stuff and remember. The main thing is for my memory. I take aluminum. I'm telling all you folks, you take aluminum, it'll help your memory. You know, it's good. Anyhow, we sell tires cheaper than anybody in Florida. We sell them 5% cheaper than anybody in Florida. You come to, you come to, what's the name of that play? Allied Discount Tires. Florida State leading Miami 12 to four as we go to the bottom of the eighth and the Hurricanes really need to get Florida State down and hope for a miracle in the top of the ninth to come from way behind to win this one. They were beaten last Leader night, five to two, and they trail four, tonight. One, George Fabergas is going to catch this inning. He is moved down from third. Fabergas catching number 14, one, Giannis number four, and third base. And the new third baseman. Yeah, that's one, Giannis. Juan Giannis, that's exactly right. He's played first base more than any other position for Ron Frazier this year. He's inserted here on the bottom of the eighth inning at third base. Fabergas has moved behind the plate as a catcher. I don't know if you need any more out of a young man than Ron Frazier gets out of George Fabergas. He can play every position. I wonder if Fabergas has ever pitched for Ron Frazier. I don't think he has. We go to the seminal eighth inning. Right fielder Chris Brock. And Chris Brock will lead things off. And he swings at the first pitch and the first chance by Giannis at third to throw it across. It is a low throw. And Brock is safely on. And that is error number six by the Hurricanes tonight. Boy, the sky has fallen tonight on Miami. As Brock leads off with a Ground ball right at third baseman Juan Giannis. Well, Gene, I had done some research between innings. We had checked out the last time Miami had committed as many as five errors, and we found an occasion back in 1987 in which they had committed six errors in a game. So this obviously ties that mark from back on April 12th of 1987. Steve Day's pitch. Again on the first pitch, Giannis has another tougher chance this time, throws it in the dirt, but a nice play by Miranda to dig it out. It's about the only chance that Giannis had. No way he was going to get it over there. He's running toward the line, had to throw across his body, and he bounced it, and on the high hop, Miranda squeezed it that time. Brock gets to second on the fielder's choice by Jarrett. He had bounced one time, Miranda stayed with it. Jarrett's retired. Hey, if you're going to throw it over there on a bounce, you need to make it a good long hop like that. It's those short hops that get you. Runner at second now, Chris Brock and Dunbar, the batter for the Seminoles, batter number nine in the Florida State order today. Today's pitch right back through the middle. One chance, and that's the first. Tozai's throw just gets Dunbar down the line at first. And on the play, Chris Brock advances to third. 
Two down now as the Seminoles go back to the top of the order with Alan Beavis. Florida State leading 12 to 4. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. And Alan Beavis has had quite a series against Miami. Three for four last night. And tonight, he is three for five. Led off the game for the Seminoles in the first with a double. And came around to score the game's first run. Steve Day on in relief of Jeff Alkire. The left-hander fires and Beavis fooled with a breaking pitch. Took something off of it. Beavis was way out in front with his cut. Dave Dorish, the relief pitcher. Line shot toward Tozar at second. One hops it and the throw to first, and that'll do it for the Seminoles. In the inning, an error, one runner left. No runs across. We've completed eight. One more frame to go. The Hurricanes down to their final three outs. FSU leads 12-4. There's only one right one, baby. You got the right one, baby. Think you can sing our song? Send your videotape performance and you could win $10,000 and appear in a Diet Pepsi commercial. If you weren't in the stands for Nolan Ryan's dramatic 6 no hitter. As he has thrown no hitter number six against the Oakland A's. His spine-tingling 5,000 strikeout. He struck him out swinging. And the history-making 300th win. Now you can be with Nolan Ryan's official video history. Nolan Ryan, feel the heat. Call 1-800-356-6000 for a box seat for the most spectacular moments in Nolan's career. See highlights from his days with the Mets, Angels, Astros, and Rangers. You'll see big moments and celebrate the strikeouts that crown Nolan Ryan king of the Ks. You'll visit Nolan at home, hear the master explain his techniques, and with a special Ryan cam, feel the heat firsthand. Plus, with each purchase, receive a unique Nolan Ryan Feel the Heat t-shirt, absolutely free. Dial 1-800-356-6000 to order Nolan Ryan's official video history. 1995 plus 450 shipping and handling. Call 1-800-356-6000 and climb aboard the Ryan Express. Top of the ninth coming up, Florida State by eight as we go into the last inning at Tim Davis has a chance to put this one away and get a victory. Frank Mora will lead off the Hurricane ninth. Mora is 0 for 1. Threw a couple of walks back in the second and the fourth and then struck out in the sixth. He's facing Tim Davis, junior left-hander for the Seminoles. And Davis is very quickly behind 2 and 0. Oh. Davis has retired 13 batters, the minimum. He was nicked for a single by George Fabregas in the fifth. But that was it. Charles Johnson came up and promptly hit into a double play to a race out. 2 0 pitch. Rounder towards short. Jarrett scoops it up. The throw to first. And the Hurricanes are down to their final two outs. Tim Davis, strong outing. Starter Jim Lewis. Davis. Is the pitcher of record right now. Needs two more outs to get the win. With his team up 12 to 4. Pitch hitter for the Hurricanes, Giacomo. Swings and fouls it back to the screen. The count evens up with one ball and one strike. Kevin DiGiacomo is a sophomore out of Ithaca, New York. Hitting 143 this season, primarily in pinch hitting roles. Coach Ron Frazier, Frazier hoping for some ninth inning magic. Trailing by eight runs here at the top of the ninth inning. Here's the 2 1. And that's in there for a call strike. 
Davis came on in relief back in the fourth inning with two outs and a runner at second. Donald Robinson had chased Jim Lewis with a two out double that drove in a pair of runs. And it cut the Florida State lead at that time to six to four. Here's the two two. Hopper toward third, scooped up nicely. Leap sacks though is in time. Boy, Gene, this has been a masterful performance by Tim Davis, hasn't it? Boy, it sure has. You mentioned it. He has faced the minimum number of batters. He came in with two out in the fourth inning, struck out Damari, and he's got everybody he's faced with the exception of Fabergas in the fifth, and that was uh, erased on a double play ball. Tozar trying to keep the Hurricanes alive here on the ninth inning. The Miami second baseman is one for three. Got a base hit and scored a run in the fourth. And that was his first and only hit in this series. Big cut. And it's even at one ball and one strike. The kid from Bristol, Tim Davis, is a couple of strikes away from matching the win. Here's the 1 1 inside. Davis with an earned run average just slightly above 2 even, 2.03. For his fourth one of the year. Breaking pitch in there for the call strike two. And it's two and two, two outs, nobody on. In the top of the ninth inning. And this could be it for the Hurricanes. And second ranked Florida State's trying to make it two in a row. The Rex Rivals from Miami. Toes our weights. Watches. And the fastball is low and wide. And the count is full. Tozar. Well, almost everybody that's still in the ball yard standing now and clapping. Here comes the 3 2 pitch to Tozar. Chopped foul for the Hurricane dugout. Somebody over there snared it with a bare hand. There's Tim Davis. He has just really handcuffed the Hurricanes tonight. Lewis was no mystery. He left with a lead of six to four. Davis has shut the door since then. Here again, the three two. Line shot right center. Block on his horse to the fence. It's off the wall. Tozar's got an extra base hit. Dunbar chases it down and Tozar's at second with a stand up double. His second hit tonight and his second in this two game series so far. And the Hurricanes stay alive with two outs. They got a runner at second. Luis Hernandez. For Luis Hernandez, who came in a couple of innings ago and replaced Chris Anderson. And Tozer got a hold of that one. Brock chased it to the wall and it ricocheted off, and Dunbar was over backing up on the play. Second hit surrendered by Tim Davis. It's a double by Mike Tozer. Luis Hernandez swings at the first pitch and loops it foul and out of play. Perez gave chase. It bounces off the screen out there as the foul ball hits in the bleachers about five rows up. Hope you'll join us tomorrow afternoon on Prime Network as Florida State and Miami again do battle. An afternoon game tomorrow. Wearing around Hernandez. And the pitch is in there, got the outside corner. Strike two. Looked like he pulled back and didn't go through with it. Al Davis, the home plate umpire, said it's a call strike. Nothing into the count. Here's the pitch. Into the dirt. Did he go around? He did not. And it's a ball of two strikes now. Pedro Grafol thought his night's work was over.
Let's take another look at it. Yeah, he pulled back on that. I think Rafaul might have thought the ball tipped off the bat. And trying to butt with a third strike. That would have been out. Davis is breaking pitch. A slider just misses outside. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Hurricanes trail 12 to 4. Fernandez trying to keep them going. Long hill to climb though, trailing eight for the second ranked Seminole. Straight three call, the game's over. What a job by that kid right there, Tim Davis. Nine strikeouts. He faced one more than the men of them. He gets his fourth one of the year. And the Florida State Seminoles have taken two from third ranked Miami. With game three slated for tomorrow. 12 4 the final score. Highlights and totals coming up. Stay with us. Go outdoors with Sunshine Network. Florida.